Longtime viewers of Rising know that we love a very good space story. So when we heard that there were recently three big developments in the world of astrophysics, we actually knew who we had to bring on to explain it all. Dr. Joe Pesch is an astrophysicist with the National Science Foundation. He joins us now to talk about dark stars, supernovas, and the hunt for alien intelligence. Dr. Joe, thank you for being here again. Thank you, thank you for having me. Hey, we appreciate you coming on. So, I mean, alien life is obviously the thing that we're most interested in here. Everybody wants to know, especially with all these UFO studies. So, as I understand it, there's been a breakthrough, uh, particularly on the on light. So, explain to us what's going on. Here. So, uh, there's there's long been a search for uh, extraterrestrials. Of course. And the, the SETI project. And that's mostly focused on radio uh, transmissions because, you know, we've, humans have been transmitting radio and television signals for many decades and so this is one of the easy ways the easiest ways of doing that and certainly in the 60s and 70s when this started that was that was an easy way to do things mm -hmm. and those programs continue today uh, both looking for uh, uh, intentional transmission that's d beamed towards us which is m maybe less likely mm -hmm. and and maybe more likely is unintentional transmissions so leakage of radio transmissions from uh, extraterrestrials no success to date, yes. uh, uh, sadly. And um, but there's other ways that that aliens could communicate. In fact, that we communicate, and mm -hmm. that's using light. And you know, NASA spacecraft have lasers that transmit between the, the uh, for communication between the, the spacecraft. Mm -hmm. And so this is maybe a more efficient, effective way of transmitting so information. So how would it work, though? Would we like beam light to other planets? Yeah. So a laser, okay. a high power laser, yeah. and one could could do that. Or again, so that would be the intentional transmission, uh -huh. or the unintentional transmission is that you have these communications with lasers on orbit, and you know, and then uh, an wow. ex ex external um, civilization would pick that up. Okay. Um, it's difficult. It's, it's yeah. very difficult, Sounds though. I mean, like light is is useful because you can transmit more information if you're doing that than radio. Uh, it's just another way of looking for potential extraterrestrial okay. intelligence. Assassin 18B, a new supernova <laughs> yes. found. So yes, right. so Assassin is a acronym. What a cool name. Yeah, 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 yes. first of all. <laughs> yeah. And, and it stands for All Sky Automated Survey for Supernovae. Okay. And it's a collection of 20 robotic telescopes, small telescopes that are situated uh, ac across the, the, the world, mm -hmm. uh, scanning the skies, observing uh, different parts of, of space looking for supernovae. And they're all pointed in different directions? Different directions, they scan. Synchronized. Okay. Well, they're each is individual, and okay, so they're gotcha. looking at different parts of the sky, yeah. and with the intent of, of detecting super, supernovae. Um, 1,000 supernovae have been detected through this system mm -hmm. uh, over the last six years. What's the significance, I guess, of, of so all this? Super, so supernova are exploding stars, yeah. massive stars, much, much larger than our sun, explode in, at the end of their lives. And uh, this is important because, number one, it's, it's a way of understanding stars, mm -hmm. uh, but more importantly, Big, massive stars produce all elements heavier than helium in their interiors and later in their explosions. And so it's one thing if they're producing all these elements. If they don't explode, those elements stay within the yeah. star. But when they explode, then material goes out into interstellar space, and the next generation of stars incorporate that material. Mm. And you know, we're here because of that. Yeah, Cal calcium in our bones. And is this part of? So I know there's something you wanted to talk about, which is this 24-year study about new stars in the Milky yes. Way. Explain what what is going on. Okay, this. so that, yeah. that's another that's another yeah. topic. Right. And um, so we have in the center of our Milky Way galaxy, uh -huh. we have a supermassive black hole. It's a smallish one as these things go. It's about four million times the mass of the sun. And uh, interestingly, there are a number of stars that orbit the black hole. And by observing these stars, we can understand regions of very strong gravity, gravity produced yes. by the black hole. And so a team has been observing one star. This is an artist representation that is either up or will be oh, up. Wow. Um, wow. Yeah. Has been observing this one particular star that's on a 16-year orbit around the black hole. And they've been observing it for 24 years. And so why do we care? Because as we watch the star in its orbit, we can learn about the gravitational field in an environment where there's really strong gravity. We can study gravity here, the general theory of relativity, for example, uh, on Earth and in our solar system. That's a region of weak gravity in the, in, in the center yeah. of our we, galaxy. What are we seeing in this photo? So exactly. we're seeing a representation yeah. of the star as it orbits the black hole, which is depicted as that uh -huh. uh, deep potential well. So what was detected was, as the star passed the black hole, came very close to the black hole, in fact, uh, it was traveling very, very rapidly. 
and more importantly, the photons of light leaving the star, as they were leaving the gravitational field of the black hole, they were being pulled by the black hole, right. and so they lost energy. The photons, as they pull out of the gravitational uh, potential well, uh -huh. lost energy, and they redshifted. They, the light became red. And so this is the way that we were able to detect that uh, general relativity is happening. Wow. Because Newtonian uh, uh, gravity that operates in a weak gravitational field, like in our solar system here on Earth, does not uh, predict that light would behave this way. Mm -hmm. It's only general relativity. So by seeing the red-shifted light coming off of that star as it passed very close to the, to the supernova, then we've been able to um, confirm. And so what does this uh, tell us? Relativity. What's the importance of it? Well, we, 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 we have a, a, a better understanding of general yeah. relativity. Uh -huh. We've been able to test it in a laboratory that we can't reproduce on Earth because right. we need that strong gravitational field that's around the black hole. And we learn about the black hole itself in the center of the, of the Milky Way. Yeah, wow. Now, now Doc, I hate to debase the dialogue here, <laughs> but the streets have been talking for about 45 days now about Mercury being in oh, retrograde. Yes. Oh, yeah, right, using right. it as an excuse for doing crazy stuff. No. So can you either bunk or debunk Mercury being in <laughs> retrograde for us right now? Retrograde is a, is a term that um, means that you know Mercury, as it moves across the sky, stops and, and, and goes back in the other direction and then makes a loop. And this is a, a normal consequence of the orbital dynamics, yeah. of relative dynamics between uh, Earth and Mercury and Venus and the other planets. Okay. And it's just an appearance on the sky. And it has so it, doesn't, so that's it. it, it, it hasn't slowed down our iPhones it, or anything? No. Right? <laughs> no. Okay. It hasn't uh, had any impact whatsoever no, on no, us. No, okay. that, right. that is well, correct. There's the definitive word from somebody who might know. <laughs> Doc, thank you so much for joining us. Thank really you very much. Much. Thank you for having me. Next week on Rising, The Intercept's Jim Risen is going to join us to talk about Secretary of State Mike Pompeo's very complex journey from Tea Party congressman to head of the State Department. And journalist Michael Tracy takes us behind the scenes of the Tulsi Gabbard-Kamala Harris dispute. That's going to be a fun one. We'll see you next week.